Okay, so I'm, I'm going to, good morning, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the Smog Free project, uh, which is here in the back, eh, which we collaborated with uh, Dassault to sort of think how can we use technology design to improve the world around us. Um, but before we dive into that, I thought it was interesting to sort of show two short projects which um, embrace this notion of clean air, clean water, clean energy, eh, which the two other pavilions or installation have also in common. I'm from the Netherlands, so most of my country is below sea level. So without technology, we would all die. Eh? We would drown a horrible death. And that's very, very interesting, because that's also about design, that it's about curiosity. It's about doing something new. If we would have been very practical, um, the Dutch people, we would have just moved to Germany. Eh? <laughs> I mean, who's going to fight against water? Well, well we do. And, and we've been doing it for more than, than a thousand years. Because so, you had another option, so hmm? you took it. You had another option. Exactly, but we stayed. So this is the Afsluit Dijk, a 32-kilometer dam, a dike, which basically protects us from this dying. So on the left, you have the sea, and on the right, you have Amsterdam, Rotterdam, the Netherlands itself. So it's very, very interesting. So... Innovation, design, software, right? the soft constructions are in the landscape where I grew up, where I built my tree huts. But 85 years old, built by hand in 1932, it is in need of renovation. And you should know, dikes in the Netherlands are as holy as um, cows are in India, or uh, what's holy in France? Baguette, uh, or Baguette. Like, like a croissant, or like, like you don't touch, you cannot the design touch. a new one. And iconic things. From exactly, the but we touched. So our Minister of Infrastructure commissioned us as part of the big 823 million euro renovation to enhance the beauty of this place. And we looked at what is already there. This is already there, the 60 floodgates. And they open and close the walls of water to let the water in and out. Uh, designed by uh, Dirk Roseburg, the grandfather of Rem Koolhaas. We started to renovate them, and we wanted to work with light and energy and poetry, but if we would have used too much technology, it would not be very sustainable or, or uh, too much energy consumption. So we didn't want to use work, we didn't want to work with LED or cables or sensors too much. So we started to look at the blueprints, eh, the sketch, and look at um, nature and also at what is already there on location. Because of course there's already light present on this famous 32 kilometer highway, which is the light of the... I'm not being rhetorical here. <laughs> what kind of light is present? Let's try. Sorry? The sun, yeah, very good. And what else? Lighting. The fish. <laughs> I've never heard that before. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. I don't know where you work, but... <laughs> what else? What? Street lights? No, there's no electricity. No, the, the lighting, the city lighting? No, there's no electricity. Cars. Yes, very good. The light of the cars. The headlights of the cars. Oh, that's interesting. So we started, in a way, like the butterfly. This is not a, a pigment. This is a structural light, structural color. So we started to use the headlights of the car... This is our, our minister, eh? mimicking the headlights of the car. So this is daytime, renovating them, making them look like temples again. And this is nighttime. So you can go there every night. And this is a statement about clean energy, where waste is being used to transform. If we can have some sound. Short move. So this is an example of, of design to improve life, eh? or to experience life. This is uh, open for public every night. You can take your electrical car in the Netherlands and uh, drive. So on one hand, it's about history, eh? celebrating the sketch 
the blueprint of the original architect and architecture, but on the other hand, it's about future. Why do we have streetlights burning the whole night when nobody's there? It, it, it doesn't make sense. And how can we use ingredients in the city and transform them into something meaningful? Maybe this is the future of lighting. I don't know. Or here, these are energy harvesting kites. Um, it's very interesting. It's an old idea of uh, one of our first Dutch astronauts, Wibbel Okkels. He went to space, saw planet Earth, and said, oh, we're doing it all wrong, like what you said this morning. Eh? We have to design our way out of it. We have to improve the world. And he had the dream of making kites which generate energy. It's very interesting. But he died in 2014 and never got a chance to realize. And I met him once, and he was so enthusiastic and when he died, we saw this project, we're like, we're going to do this. <laughs> we're going to take some money, some time, some energy. We're going to contact his widow, uh, Joost Okkels, and we're going to make his dream come true. So how does it work? It's a smart kite. Eh? It can stay up in the air for weeks, maybe months, connected with the ground via a cable eh, to, the, to the ground station. And like a dynamo on your bicycle, it sort of pushes and pulls and therefore generates power, electricity. And because this line was so important, we decided to make it light emitting. And this is now flying um, in the Netherlands and also is going to Asia, which of course is the inventor of the kite long, long time ago. So this is the ground station, pushing and pulling. started to put little cameras in it so you can do live video streams and you can log in get a bit dizzy that's cool you know so so energy is everywhere all we have to do is is harvest it a kite like this when there's like strong wind 20 to 100 kilowatts per hour that's enough for 150 120 households that's really interesting. And besides the, the tech and, and the, the clean energy, um, it's also about sort of saying ideas are everywhere. Eh? But all we have to do is sort of put some smart people in a room with a mission, with an ambition, and make it happen. This is the widow of, jo of uh, Joost Okkels, of the Dutch astronaut. So she came to the opening, and eh? she's sort of like holding on to him. She was really happy. Yeah. So sometimes it's not just future, it's also learning from history. And, making it happen. Yeah. Anyway, back to the project where we're here. Um, because it's very important, these kind of projects and what you've been addressing as well, uh, the notion of, of customization and diversity in, in our landscape. Um, because this is our reality. The city has become a machine that is harming us, eh, that, that is killing us. I mean, I love China. I've been working there for many, many years. But four years ago, this is my room, eh, looking at CCTV Tower, Rem Koas. Good day, bad day. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I realize I live eight to nine years shorter. Children have lung cancer when they're six years old. And it's not just China. Krakow, Poland, where we do a project, is even worse than Beijing. Oxford Street, London, the same as 22 cigarettes per day that you inhale if you walk around. Milano today is quite good, by the way. It's quite good, yeah. Yeah, Milano is good. I checked this morning. So you're sort of in a safe zone here. <laughs> No, but it's, it's, it's weird that we accept this. So let's set a new standard of clean air, clean water, and clean energy. Yes? So we decided to build the largest smoke vacuum cleaner in the world. You know, let's, let's suck it up. Let's invest in clean energy in electrical cars, long term. Absolutely important, the new standard. But let's not wait for permission and do something now. So what can we do? Well, we can suck it up. So it sucks up pollution, cleans it, and releases it. This is how a project starts, eh? very simple, unhindered by any kind of knowledge. I didn't know, I was an amateur in smog, in pollution, I didn't know anything. But you start to read, to write, you create a team of smart people, and you put them in a room with a pizza hotline and says, <laughs> nobody leaves the room <laughs> until we have a solution. That works quite well for, for a while. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people saying it's not possible, and then we built the first one. This is Rotterdam. So it sucks up 30,000 cubic meters per hour, 
capturing the PM2.5, PM10 particles, the ultra-fine particles, using very little uh, green energy, and then releasing the clean air, so we have parks which are 20 to 70 percent more clean than the rest of the city. And it's important because this is our current situation. This is an index of air quality index, and it's a global recognized index of air quality. And uh, so this is how, how, how would you call this? This is our, our, our focus, our, our target audience, or what's the... What's yeah, the, yeah, we can see that. You know, yeah, something like that. You know, it's a bit sinister, but this is, this is our reality uh, of, of high pollutions. Um, Chinese government started to work with us and we started to make these clean air temples. That's how the local citizens in Beijing, Dalian, uh, Tianjin uh, are calling it. It's really about showing the beauty of clean air and then scaling it up. It's always in collaboration eh, with the, the Dutch government, the China Central Government, uh, Ministry of Environmental Protection Bureau, United Nations, and, um, yeah, and this Dutch guy who talks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> what? I can't make fun of myself. No? Yeah. So, so, so it's very interesting. You need government for long-term investment, and you need designers to sort of tickle bottom-up and meet in the middle to make clean air cities. Scientific research done by the Technical University of Eindhoven, which validates how it works. Eh? So a lot of, it's a lot of science because pollution is very tricky. It's, it's very different. It, it's always changing. It's hard to measure it properly. And this is Poland three weeks ago. Um, in the snow, uh, it's in the top 30 most polluted cities in, in Europe because of the industry and, and they burn everything at home, just everything, all the waste, so it's like, Ugh. and it's sort of standing there. Oh yeah, what is interesting, I came there at the day of the opening um, and everything was of course already ready because I have a really good team which prepares everything really well. Um, and these little dogs were there, you see them on the picture? And there were a lot of them, like, hanging around at the tower. And I'm like, what's going on? It was like, sort of like a David Lynch movie I was walking into. Like a sort of secret meeting I wasn't told about. Checking on you. Uh, yeah, exactly. And um, what is interesting, so I ask, and apparently dogs are very sensitive towards pollution. Okay? So their noses, they can't process it, and their lungs. So somehow they could smell the clean air, and they were sort of hanging out there and enjoying the clean air. This is, of course, not scientific data, but it, it, it really, we had little rabbits in Rotterdam. So animals are very sensitive and very aware of pollution. And why are humans not? Why am I not? And to conclude, every week or every month or every year, we open it. It opens like a, like a, like a, like a, like a spaceship, eh? like, a, like a Marilyn Monroe on the hot air. Well, okay, anyway, you know what I mean. And um, this is... You see that in the exhibition as well. So Kuma installation is really about CO2, eh? the, the spiral, capturing CO2. 90,000 cars per... Uh, you mean like how many cars? The, the Kuma, 90,000 cars eh? of the emissions that they have. And this is focused not on CO2, but on the particles, the smog. Particle, yeah. So these are billions of PM2.5, PM10 particles compressed. Um, this is the kiss of death. So if you swallow this, you live two years shorter. I, I, I would not recommend it. But also here, like the waste, waste of the headlights of the car of the first project, or the waste that we don't use of the wind eh, in, the, in the second project, we said we should do something with this. Waste should not exist. That's a choice. Nature doesn't have waste. Why do we? 42% is carbon. Carbon under high pressure, you get diamonds. Yeah, that's really interesting. So we compressed it for 30 minutes. And so by sharing a ring, you donate a thousand cubic meter of clean air to the city where the tower is in. And this was very important for me as well to, to, to not just make technology, but also make it personal. Um, yeah, make it, make it that people care. Wedding couples started to purchase it. This is Prince Charles. He has the cufflinks. Oh, yeah, here, these are wedding couples where from India, where he proposed to her. This is not actor, eh? It's like real wedding couple. So they sent these photos to us, and um, she said yes. I checked, they're still married, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow I feel responsible for this. <laughs> but, but you are. Yeah, so she said yes, 
So I think this is very interesting, you know, like, like, like maybe it's sort of redefining what is beauty, what is, what is good. And, and the finance we made with the jewelry worldwide helped us to build the first tower. So the waste gave us money to make it happen. Also interesting. And to conclude, it's a movement. Eh? One tower will never solve the whole problem. It's a movement like what you said, eh? the we. It's about an interaction. If we. If we, yeah. What if? Um, I'm a professor at Tongji uh, University in Shanghai, so we do workshops in um, Shanghai, Beijing. New ideas pop up, and this is what we're working on now. Smog-free bicycles, which suck up polluted air, clean it, and release the clean air, eh, together with OFO, the, the bike-sharing companies. 1.1 million shareable bikes in Beijing region only. Um, so it's a lot of you know, interaction, learning together, trying to understand and, and, and make something happen that you cannot do alone. But of course, that's sort of the bottom-up. What we've been talking about is the big picture, the city scale. Eh? How can we make a cleaner city? And so I want to conclude with this one. Uh, that's sort of, uh, sort of the, 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 the projection towards the future. A lot of old cities, they have a sort of way of capturing, making sure that the air gets stuck. And that's really weird, because if it's sort of more open, it's more fluid, more airflow reduces the pollution. So that's what we're working on now, eh? to with the, the, the city software, eh? that from SolidWorks to the city software that you have. Can we design cities uh, to enhance the airflow? Can we design clean air cities? Uh, I think the answer is yes, and I'm, yes. I'm looking forward to, to have that conversation, how to make that happen. Well, thank you, All right, Dan. Thank you. Thank you.